Hey everybody, it's Cheryl Lawson. Welcome to LiveFAQ.com. I'm here today with Edwina Rains, who is an oncology administrator for several years. And Edwina has come to us with her list of frequently asked questions about newly diagnosed or how to help people get through uh, their cancer diagnosis. You can learn more about her at cancersteps.com or even ask your own questions. Welcome, Edwina. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about your background and kind of how, you know, how these questions uh, came to be. Well, I've been in the healthcare field as an administrator for about 30 years, with about 23 and a half of that, specifically in oncology. And these are questions that patients and family members frequently ask, uh, concerns that they have, things that they might be embarrassed or afraid to ask their healthcare provider. So hopefully we can give them answers to kind of help them navigate through the journey that they're beginning. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so the first question, and I'm sure it's, uh, it's one that uh, is the most important, is now that I've been diagnosed with cancer, what do I do now? Well, first, you're probably feeling extremely overwhelmed, and that is a very common feeling, so uh, don't be discouraged at that. In the next few weeks, few days, you're going to be giving be given a lot of information. You're going to have a lot of questions. Uh, one thing I would suggest is that you get a notebook and you write down questions that you have throughout the day, in the middle of the night. Uh, you write down information that your health care providers are giving you, anything that you might want to research. Uh, and keep that with you and keep everything there because sometimes you'll forget things that will give you a reference to go back. You want to make sure you have that with you when you go to see your health care provider so that you'll remember to get all of your questions asked. Um, you'll also want to know things like, you know, what type of cancer do I have? Do you know where it started? Uh, has it spread? What are my treatment options? Um, different things like that. So this will be a good place uh, to keep all that information. You also want to, to engage others and reach out to others. There are people around you, whether it be in your health care provider's um, office, family, friends that want to help you any way they can, um, but you need to let them know because you have to remember they're going to be a little bit cautious of what to ask and what to do. So make sure that, that you are sharing that with others and let them help you. Wonderful. So the next question is, um, you know, when someone is so emotional, um, the question is sometimes I'm depressed and sometimes I think I can't handle this. Is this normal and where do I go for help? Those are very normal and common feelings. You'll feel yourself go through, you know, several stages from uh, depression to uh, anger, uh, you know, and, and even good, good feelings of, you know, I think I can get through this, I'm going to fight this. Um, <laughs> Again, your health care provider will have several resources for you. Um, there are lots of organizations, the American Cancer Society. There are specialty organizations for people's specific type of cancer, um, churches, support groups, um, family and friends that can help you uh, get through this. Also, your, your health care provider may be able to prescribe you certain medications to help you deal with certain feelings. And also, some of the medications that you might be taking might be causing some of those feelings. So you want to make sure you discuss that with your health care provider. Wonderful. So the next question is, um, is there any financial help for all of the medications that someone newly diagnosed or someone that is diagnosed or dealing with cancer um, has to take? There usually is financial help. A lot of that is based on a first come, first serve. Uh, application. Most of the pharmaceutical companies, whether it be for some of the actual chemotherapy drugs or some of the oral medications, do have patient assistance programs. Um, usually you can find those uh, through a social worker or a financial advisor at your health care provider's um, office. Also, uh, search you can search the drugs that you have on the uh, or the medications that you're taking, you can search those on the internet. Uh, it will require you filling out an application um, and they will ask you personal information and financial information and that is required for them to be able to assist you. There are other, also other specialty um, organizations that have limited resources to be available to help. Wonderful. So um, the, the next question is, can I still 
do the things I enjoy, like working, exercising, sex, and socializing. You can. Usually you, you want to check again with your health care provider. Most of it will depend on how you're feeling. You'll find that most health care providers will encourage you to continue to do the things that you feel like doing. What you're able to do will depend on several different factors. Those will be, um, for instance, the treatment that you're getting, how frequently you're getting, what your overall health is, what your activity level was, you know, before you were diagnosed with cancer. If you weren't a marathon runner before you were diagnosed, you're probably not going to be one after. Mm -hmm. um, but you need to make sure that you listen to your body, that you know um, when enough is enough and don't feel, don't push yourself uh, because your body needs time to rest and recuperate from the treatments that you're receiving. Right. So how do I connect with other people that have the same kind of cancer and treatment that I'm going through is the next question. Again, through specialty organizations, through the American Cancer Society, uh, there are many, many, especially for women with breast cancer, there are many, many different organizations available. Um, also one of the best places to connect is the area in which you're receiving your chemotherapy treatment. In those rooms it is amazing to watch the friendships that are formed and the information that is shared with each other. It's people who are going through the same thing, even if they don't have the same type of cancer you do, they're still going through the journey. So. Um, ask questions, you know, you'll be in there probably with people who are completing, you know, towards the end of their journey when you're starting. Um, and again, turn to uh, your health care provider, um, your case social worker, usually most cancer institutes and things have a social worker and a financial advisor. Um, and then if you can't find anything or need help, you can come back to Cancer Steps and we can direct you in that direction. I have to tell you the the creating relationships with with other people in the in the uh, treatment place. Uh, you know, my dad went through treatment, and he and my mom uh, befriended one lady and her husband who were going through chemotherapy, and you know they became just really fast friends and a support system for each other to the point where when she passed, my parents actually went to drove to her services, and so. Uh, it really is an interesting relationship that people can it get is. and connect with. Yes, it is. And your your nurses or your healthcare providers that are administering your treatments and stuff too are a great resource. Right. Okay. So the next question is how uh, how will my appearance be affected and what can I do about it? So a lot of people experience um, hair loss or weight loss. Um, how will that be affected? Not all treatments, not all drugs cause hair loss. Um, when you are given orientation about the treatment regimen that's been selected from you, uh, your health care provider will review some of those side effects. If hair loss is one of them, uh, one recommendation is before you start treatment and before your hair starts to fall out, uh, if you think you want to go the route of wearing a wig, to go to um, a salon or wherever have them style a wig for you that's close to your hairstyle. Um, you know, wigs are great nowadays. You can't you can't tell a lot of times whether they're real hair or a wig or whatever. Some women don't like to wear their the wigs, and so they will opt for scarves and hats. Um, would encourage you if that's what you do, or even with a wig, to have fun with that. Um, and some people don't like either. So uh, women sometimes will will opt for you know nothing, just the bald look, and focus on their makeup or earrings, uh, things that will detract from the hair. Um, American Cancer Society has a real good program. It's called Look Good, Feel Good. Uh, that information would, is available online. Uh, probably have access through your health care provider or in your um, local cancer society. That has a lot of ideas and suggestions and stuff to help you get through the hair loss. Because for a lot of people that is traumatic. Uh, as traumatic sometimes as the treatment is. For other people, I've seen people who have had fun with it. They've gotten three or four different wigs and different styles and different colors and, and had fun with it. As far as weight loss and things like that, obviously sometimes treatments will affect your appetite. You need to make sure you discuss that with your health care provider. There are things and su supplements, uh, medications and things that they can give you to help increase your appetite so that your weight loss is not critical. So um, the next question I think is, is uh, one that a lot of people, uh, whether it's a family member or 
the patient themselves is what is chemotherapy? Uh, is it a shot? Does it uh, take all day? Or in an all are all treatments of chemotherapy the same? No, they're not. There are many, many, many different kinds of chemotherapy drugs, and then there are many different kinds of combinations or regimens of those treatment drugs. It all depends on the type of cancer you have, the stage of the cancer at which you were diagnosed, or where you're at in that um, diagnosis process. Um, you know, if it was advanced uh, or in early stages when it was received. So the various combinations will also depend on. Uh, how long and how often you receive the treatment. Uh, some chemotherapy treatments take literally just minutes and are like a shot. Some of them are infusions like via like when you get an IV um, and some of them will even re require a continuous infusion pump that you will wear for a certain length of time. So a lot of people think you know well I had a friend who got chemo, but theirs only took an hour, and mine's taking eight. And that is just, again, based on the difference in the regimens that you are receiving. And when you are going through your orientation with your healthcare provider on what regimen they have selected for you, they will be able to answer those questions and stuff for you, specific to your treatment. So they'll be able to answer how long it's going to take. How long. And then what the methodology, right? Right. Excellent. So um, the next question, I think, is uh, along the lines of the uh, expenses and how to uh, finance. So the question is, I can't I can't manage this financially, uh, and I can't pay my deductible, uh, co-insurance, and out-of-pocket expenses. You know, are there any uh, programs that can help people in that situation? Yes, there are. There are foundations. There are co-patient assistance programs. Um, there are some state-funded programs. And usually even through some of the institutions and facilities, there are uh, programs. Again, most of those are on a first-come, first-served basis. You'll have to fill out an application that will ask information, but there is help available. Um, there should be no reason for anyone to go without treatment um, because there are resources out there. Perfect. So I'm going to pause here and just remind everybody that um, you can ask your own question to Edwina uh, either now or add your question on cancersteps.com. You'll be taken to the Live FAQ uh, page and you can ask a question or you can see if your question has already been answered. So uh, make sure you engage with us and we'll follow up with Edwina with follow up questions. So the next question is how do I know if my treatments are working? It usually will take a little while, you know, several treatments before the doctor will decide if he wants to evaluate and see if you're responding to treatments. Uh, again, depending on the type of treatment that you're having and the type of cancer that you have, uh, your doctor will either do lab tests, uh, x-rays, MRIs, PET scans, things like that to basically see if your treatment is working uh, before he continues on. Uh, Again, it will depend a little bit on what stage your cancer was and, and treatments and, and things. So um, that leads into, uh, I have pain and nausea and I can't sleep and uh, what should I do? Uh, I don't want my health care provider to think I'm complaining all the time. First, you need to communicate with your health care provider, whether that be your physician, the nurses that are giving you your treatment. Um, they need to know. Don't assume that they know that you have nausea or that you're not sleeping. Uh, they have multiple patients that they're taking care of and they need for you to communicate with them. Uh, trust me when I say they're not going to think any question is a silly question or a stupid question. You know, little things. Uh, you know how your body feels. You know what's different. Um, you need to let them know because they will have some answers for you on things that you can do to help ease those complications from the treatment. Perfect. And you know this is a question I think, um, I'm not sure how many people have this question, but um, the next question, is, but, it, but it seems like it would be a common question, is, is my cancer contagious? Now, cancer itself is not contagious. People don't have to worry about being around people who have cancer. They're not going to catch breast cancer or lung cancer or anything like that from someone who has it. Yeah. So, um, and then the next question is, will my health insurance company drop me now that I have cancer? Uh, the million dollar question. There are laws out there to protect you from things like that. 
uh, from your health insurance just dropping you. Uh, you do need to make sure your premiums are paid and paid timely, especially if you had a health insurance plan through an employer and now you are on COBRA, which means you have to make your own pay payments for your health insurance. Uh, you don't want to give the health insurance companies an excuse to drop you because your payment was not paid, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they can do that. Um, other thing I encourage everyone to do is to read their plan, um, look and see what it says if you don't understand it because I know these plans have a lot of information in them. Um, ask like the financial advisor, it's your health care providers. Again, you can come back to Cancer Steps and, and ask us and we'll be glad to help you with that. Um, but just be cautious, know kind of your plan ahead of time and make sure your premiums are paid. Wonderful. So the next question is uh, I know we talked about chemotherapy earlier. The next question is what are my treatment options? Depending on the type of cancer that you have, again the stages, uh, will depend on the treatment options. Options can range from uh, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, a combination of both, oral medications, uh, surgeries, um, and or like I said a combination of any of them. Um, Sometimes, you know, there are no treatment options, but that is something that you need to make sure that you discuss with your health care provider. You want to know what your options are so that you can make an informed decision on which, which treatment option you believe to be best for you. That's a joint decision. Like I said, it, it's your option, but you need to make that jointly by being informed and working with your health care provider to do that. That makes a lot of sense. So um, the next question goes back to uh, the insurance question. And will my insurance company cover all of the necessary medical bills? Uh, that depends on your insurance company. All insurance companies have their own, uh, basically what they are called is coverage, coverage determination policies. So every insurance company can be different on if, what treatments they'll cover for what disease process. Um, also some insurance companies require that before you start treatment you get a pre-certification or a prior off which is like their approval where they just say yes it's okay we'll cover this. You want to make sure you check to see if that's required because if that if you don't get that done then they may not cover your treatments. Um, one comfort level though for you is that most healthcare providers again have financial counselors, people who are specialists in this that will check your insurance, verify your coverage and and hopefully inform you of what your out of pocket expenses could be and what will be covered and not before you begin treatment. Perfect. So this question, uh, the next question is from um, obviously a MyMedLab customer and it says my doctor has ordered blood tests before my next chemotherapy treatment. If I get my blood work done at my med lab, will they fax the results to my health care provider? Yes, they will. My med lab will make sure they have all of the information that they need, uh, correct and accurate information to send results to your health care provider and they will get those to them as quickly as possible. Perfect. So um, the next question I think uh, is important, especially to, to those of us family members who are uh, suffering. It says, I worry about my family and their feelings, fears, and emotions. Are there resources available to help them through this process? There are resources for them. There are support groups, just like there are support groups for the, the patient going through the cancer journey. There are support groups for their family. Um, there are resources as far as literature, um, you know, uh, church organizations, uh, groups through the American Cancer Society and, and different things. Again with the family, the, one of the most important things is to communicate your feelings. Families sometimes are afraid to ask you how they're feeling or bring up the word cancer because uh, they don't want to make you feel bad or, or worse. So that is a lot of their fear and a lot of their emotional uh, roller coaster also. So if you communicate with them how you're feeling, ask them how they're feeling and if there's anything they want to talk about. We see that a lot too with children. There are a lot of resources out there to discuss cancer with children. Um, you know, they want to know the answers and they'll they'll figure out one if you don't discuss it with them. So, um, And there's a lot of things that are geared towards the age groups for those children. So again, back to communicate with them. Uh, Seek out the resources that are available for them to support groups and things like that for your family. Yeah. 
Um, what if I have a question, uh, a problem, or I just don't feel right? Um, when should I call my health care provider? If it's just a question, a basic question, or something that is non-emergency, um, the best time to do that is during their business hours. Um, when you first start your journey, that's something you might want to discuss with, for instance, the nurse that's giving you your treatment or your health care provider, and they might have special times that are, are better for them to take calls or answer questions. However, if it's an emergency, you need to call them immediately, and if it is that emergency, you need to report to your nearest emergency room. Don't assume that everything's just okay, because, um, and they need to know and they want to know. So the next question is, while I'm taking treatment, is it okay to be around other people who are sick, whether that's family members or any, any you know, out in public? No, it's not. Um, while you're taking treatment, your immune system is compromised or weakened. So you are more apt to catch, whether it be little colds or things like that, than you were before you started treatment. Also, while you're undergoing treatment with your weakened immune system, it's going to take you longer to get over things. So what, maybe prior to, to this journey and prior to your treatments, you know, you could quickly respond to a cold or the flu or something. It is going to take you longer. If you become sick and things, it can affect your lab counts and it can cause uh, your treatment to be delayed. Uh, you'll find that the doctor will do usually lab work every so often to check your, your blood counts um, and if those are, are low or off from where he wants them to be then it could delay your treatment. So it's you're just better off to stay away from people who are sick. Right. Um, okay, are there, uh, the next question is, are there side effects to radiation treatment? Uh, normally not. Radiation is usually pretty pain-free. Most of the side effects would just be tiredness, fatigue, um, and or skin irritations like minor sunburns and things like that because it is radiation and it is going through your skin. Uh, but for the most part, those are the two main side effects. Okay, and the, the last question, I can't believe we're getting to our one of our last questions um, <laughs> is what should I do if I want to get a second opinion? I would encourage you to discuss that with your health care provider. Uh, in most cases, health care providers understand and are willing uh, to refer you to someone for a second opinion. The best reason to discuss that is they know the centers of excellence. They know uh, who possibly would be the best to get a second opinion for the type of cancer that you have. Uh, they can help you arrange that. A lot of places will not accept patients for a second opinion without a referral from another physician. This also kind of gives you the continuity of care because you know that your current health care physician will be uh, making sure that wherever you're going for a second opinion that they have all of your records and your results and know what has happened so far. Um, part of the journey through cancer is for you to be comfortable with your health care provider, for you to be comfortable and confident in the treatments that you're receiving um, and that they have you know, your best interest at heart. And most of them do and most of them are willing to help you with that second opinion. Um, if they're not, there are centers of excellence uh, depending on geographically where you're at. Uh, you can do some research on the internet. Um, there's lots of information out there on uh, where the best place for you to go for your type of cancer is. Uh, don't be afraid to ask your health care provider to assist you with that. So. Now with Cancer Steps, I know you're um, able to talk to people if they get their lab work through my med lab. So um, please feel free to um, log into cancersteps.com or you can simply go to livefaq.com and, and click on uh, Cancer Steps links or uh, you'll see Edwina's face there, <laughs> smiling face there. <laughs> and please don't hesitate to do that because this is a journey that is, is difficult enough so if there's the little things that might seem major to you we, we can address uh, we can help you with and uh, can maybe just take some of that extra added stress or what off so you can can put your energy towards uh, defeating your disease. So Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Edwina. This has been uh, a wonderful time. So I look forward to the next next time you join us. Okay, me too. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.